What's up? Welcome to another episode of Emma's Bunker. I'm your host, Emma Wilman. Someday, maybe it'll be someone else or I'll be someone else. Who knows? Who knows? I'm solo today. And also, this is really exciting. I'm in a studio. Normally, I'm recording from some obscure location that I set up on my own. And there's varying degrees of fucked upness of that. I don't know if you guys caught the episode with Gina Brilliant or saw the video of it. There's a giant cloud backdrop that I have that's like a virtual situation. And the reason there was that was because I had lost my wallet and ripped the Airbnb I was staying at to the point. If you saw it on video, you would feel like my childhood issues were self-evident. It would have been just so there would have had to be some kind of intervention. It's almost more embarrassing because I was sober too. Like it would have just been such a fucking shit show. So this is so nice to be in a nice clean space that I can't fuck up. Maybe famous last words. I've got a coffee here. I have spilled coffee in the studio before, but let's not go down that rabbit hole. So I'm inside in a nice space. Very happy to be here. I I have some emails from you guys and I wanted to do an update on a few things. So the first one was my tooth. If you listened to the episode last week, you know, I have veneers on the front of my teeth. Someone asked me for the story in the veneers. This is a story. And someone really did. Because sometimes I'll be like, oh, someone asked me just as a lead in for me to say it. But I did get asked about this. It was, well, I prompted it. I was like, ask me about the veneers. And someone was like, how'd you get the veneers? I'll tell you. This is what happened. Years ago, I lived in Harlem. And I used to go into this dentist's office, you know, as often as you go in, once a year, whatever. And the dentist asked me what I did, and I was like, I'm, I'm trying to make it in show business, which is a little side note. I always say I'm trying to make it in show business. My therapist the other day said, Emma, why don't you change it to you're making it in show business? I said, bitch, that's a good idea. I said it. I didn't say bitch. I said yes. But I really like that, so I'm trying to shift the narrative here. But at the time, I said to him, I said, I'm trying to make it in show business. He goes, okay. And he was real Eastern European, I believe. He goes... He's like, he's like, oh, okay, you did something, 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 TV teeth. And I was like, what was that? And he said, something, something, you want TV teeth. And I said, yeah, I fucking do. And he was like, all right. And then he, he said, I'll work with you. And then I paid him cash and I got $20,000 worth of teeth for about three grand. Now, that might then make it not a surprise that we cut to six years later and the teeth are flying out of my fucking face. But it is what it is. I'm just trying to be honest about what's going on. So last week, the tooth, as you know, pops off on stage. And I feel so vulnerable because the tooth under it is this little snaggle tooth that hasn't seen the light of day in, I mean, since six years. This is the only thing I can really think to compare it to. And it's kind of fucked up. But I, eh, now, you know, I watch a lot of true crime. I was, it's kind of like, I would imagine someone who had been kidnapped, like Joseph Fritzl had those kids, you know, kidnapped. They didn't see the light of day for years and years and years. So you can only imagine when they went out in the sun, they must've been like, I'm so glad I'm free, but also fuck my skin. The sun's burning me. You know, you can only imagine. And thank God they got out. And what a horroring, horrible story. And I cannot equate what my tooth feels like to that trauma but I am saying in terms of my ADD brain just thinking of things that are shocked by the elements my tooth is also in that camp shocked so that happens and then this week it's in the back of my mind I'm like I got my little fritzel tooth and I'm I'm feeling like oh, I just hope it doesn't like pop out because I just don't want to deal with that right now there's too much stuff too much stuff but it did pop out on on Friday, I had a show in San Diego, and I drove up with Kelsey Cook, who was on last week, and I told her, I said, just heads up, my tooth popped out. She said, what? I said, eh, it's complicated. And then we were eating burritos before the show, and uh, the motherfucker popped out on the ground, but I didn't know it was on the ground. I didn't know if I had swallowed it. I didn't know what happened. My tooth, feeling the light feeling the elements, feeling the air, so vulnerable. 
It's so you go, it's so little. It's just this little snaggle that's been shaved down and it's so naked. I think if I walked down the street butt naked, my skin would be more accustomed to the elements than what this tooth I would feel I feel more naked with the tooth than I would with the you know, privates. So pops out, popped it back in. She I don't even know if she noticed. I'm getting real like fucking god damn it with this tooth. I'm going to have to get this fixed. And then we went to the show and it popped out again. So um, if there are any dentists out there, just hit me up. I mean, I got, I, I paid cash before and I'll do it again. I need the tooth laminated or whatever it is back in the head. And if you're having any dental problems, just know you're not alone. And I see you and I feel you. And, you know, it's... <sighs> I've said it is what it is like 18 times about this tooth. And it's so bad when it comes out. It's one of those things. It's a little thing that makes a big difference in the face. Have you ever seen someone where like when they have bangs or glasses or something, it just totally radically changes everything? Like I dated someone once and when they had bangs, when she had bangs, hot. I don't know. I don't know what happened when she moved the bangs to the side. Woof. There was so much going on in that forehead. It was of interest. That's why the reason I started getting Botox was literally because of her forehead. Nothing else. And don't, I don't want, sometimes when I talk about Botox, I, other people, I feel them being like, oh, should I get Botox? Don't feel self-conscious. This is my neuroses and my stuff and whatever. You look great. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You look great. You're like, no, not me. Yes, you. Her forehead was so freaking... Whatever it was, I said, God damn. And that's when I started getting Botox because of that forehead. Those bangs, radical difference. Radical. And that's what happens to me when this tooth pops out. You wouldn't even know me. If you saw me without my tooth, you wouldn't recognize me. You wouldn't recognize me. You'd, you'd think I was Dick Cheney. That's how evil and weird the tooth looks. Dick Cheney. I'm not talking about his politics, but you know. If they were casting an evil villain and Dick Cheney walked in, they'd be like, two on the nose. He just looks too much like, too diabolical looking is what's going on with him. So, that happened. Also, oh man. Okay, so one of my, one of my most favorite text exchanges ever. My acting coach has become a buddy of mine. Now, this is my acting coach that I've been with for a while. And he's a straight dude. He's great. We become kind of buddies over the course of just training together. Haven't talked to him in a while. Haven't had an audition in a minute. I'm walking down the street. Maybe it's like 11.30 p.m. Walking down the street trying to get my steps in, which we're going to talk about in a second. Trying to get my steps in. I'm looking at my phone because I like to watch the steps happen in real time because it's kind of like, ooh, it's like a video game, you know, one, two, three, I'm doing it. And also I get confused after I count to 20 generally. If I'm trying to walk and talk, it's too much going on. So I'm watching the steps come in. Then I get this text from my acting coach and he said, hey, I don't know if you recommended this girl. He says the name of a girl is a gay girl. And he's like, I just got her cast in something from us working together. She's so great. It's crazy right now. I'm only having sex with gay girls. So I stopped walking and was like, wow, I'm surprised he told me that. I know he went through a breakup about a year ago, but I was like, okay, all right. There was a lot going on. And I know the girl that he's talking about. And I was just struck. And I... I told my girlfriend, Ashley, I was like, check this shit out. I told her and she was like, what? I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. Huh. And what was happening in my head was I was like, okay, how do I, what does this mean exactly? And then some, some toxic masculinity in my brain was, this is so fucked up and I don't know why I did it, but I almost, there was a demotion of her to me, even though she's my buddy. But then I was like, no, you know what? Good for her. And then I was like, is she like, what is going on? Good for, but then I was really thinking like good for both of them, for them to both like supersede 
all of the things around what is supposed to be like a good fit of two people. Because they would have been saying, fuck all that, but also let's fuck each other. So I was happy for them, but also thinking of extreme loneliness, like, you know, the last two people on earth type situation where it's like they were just working on the audition forever. And then they were both, he had been single and I don't know what I thought was going on with her. And they looked at each other and were like, uh, but I was kind of honored that he told me that. And I was like, all right. And keep in mind, it said, I'm only having sex with gay women, not that gay woman, gay women. So I was like, okay, huh. So I said, good for you. You know, I had a buddy in college who was really soft butch and she used to fuck a guy sometimes. And it worked out great because it was like the, he sometimes would want a relationship, but she'd be like, no, I'm gay. Whatever. And it worked out, you know, no strings attached, just sex. Good for them. And he didn't respond to that. And I was like, but, you know, your secret's safe with me. Don't even worry about it. I got your back. I'm a little surprised, but also 2020, right? 2020. So then he writes back. Ah, no. Emma, I meant to say I'm only having success with gay women. So he's coaching three gay women, and I guess they're doing the best in his auditions. And autocorrect changed success to sex. I took that, ran with it. He was like, I didn't respond because I was so confused. Because in his brain, he said, I'm only having success with gay women. And I jumped to, well, I had a butch friend in college who used to fuck guys. What? Did he think I was trying to get a discount? Like, what? Luckily, he scrolled up, checked that out. That's that's the most embarrassing text confusion exchange I've ever had. I would love, love to hear yours because that's such a fun thing to listen to. That's like a fun, feel-good escape of a thing. I had one once where I was texting with someone I was still in a relationship with, but it was in the wind-down phase. And it was in the phase of the relationship that I get into where the girl's really bothered and it's kind of like, hey, like, you didn't do this, and you said that. Why are you picking up the minute? And she texted me, I'm, I'm upset, or, or something. Something, something. And I wrote back, you're, oh, you're mad. And for some reason, my phone changed it to, oh, you're mad, ha. I just said, oh, are you mad? Oh, you're mad. My phone changed it to Are You Mad, Ha? Huh? I don't remember if you remember that song by the rapper Juvenile called Ha? Huh? I was like, oh, you mad, ha? Huh? That's how it ended up coming across to her. Like, oh, I had fucked up. Oh, you mad, ha? Huh? She was, then she was mad. Then she was mad. That was a bad, that was a bad one for me. But, so he thought I was saying, are you having sex with? I'm, you're having sex with gay. I'm, I'm only having sex with gay girls these days, and I thought, "Wow, what a thing! What a thing to open with! What a thing to admit! What a thing to admit!" Crazy text message. I don't know if it's possible to be too understanding. That's what I felt like I did a little bit with that. Now that's something to be understanding of. But what I did with that right away was just. Instead of being like, this is way out of character for both of these two, I was like, I get it. I want to make you feel comfortable that you shared this. And then it got me thinking about times where there's like red flags or things when I tell other people, they're like, oh my God, why did you keep going with that? Or why did you overlook that? These are, this is the house is on fire and you're in talking about what's in the pantry. What is going on? And for me, it's because I don't know if it was a coping skill as a kid. I know a lot of kids of divorced parents trying to see people as people where you're like, okay, why did they do this? Just to understand where people are coming from to help you process. I do that, but it's almost like to a fault. And I was thinking about times where that happens and how I know that that can happen with other people. And it's almost like being too empathetic. And I 
then had to call myself out and think, I was thinking, I, I almost manipulate empathy sometimes too, because I know people can be empathetic. And then when they get into a relationship with me, I mention certain things about my childhood. And I'm saying this to call myself out now that I know will then allow them to be more empathetic with me in the future. I mention, for example, eating alone a lot. I'm like, I know I ate alone a lot as a kid. And I do that to subliminally plant. That's why my table manager are all fucked up and I don't do the dishes. So that's a little move I have. You can use it for better or worse because this is leading me up to with the questions I kind of want to present like the, the advice that comes from my heart and soul, which rings spiritually true. But then the more dirt bag, let me plant that seed. So maybe I don't have to do dishes that much. And they're like, why do you eat like that? Oh, because you ate alone as a kid. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, my stepmom was kind of this and I was I was very lonely. I, I was lonely and they, I was alone. Lonely, lonely, alone. Eating by myself, and that's why I use my hands when I eat. And really, I should just be like, lots of people had it way worse, and uh, I probably only ate alone five times. But I'll just exaggerate it. Sometimes I'll exaggerate stuff so much, then I'll be like, whoa, what what was the real? But I I know I did actually eat alone way more than five times, and way more than just was probably normal for a kid. I've been exaggerating stuff a little bit with, with... me moving around too because Ashley really right right now she's like I want to move out of LA and go to New Orleans for a couple months and I just let up my lease in New York so cut to me being like well I'm homeless I'm homeless and the other day I was ordering camping equipment online and I I ordered this like thing that stands up that you can get changed in and then she was like, what, what are you, you, I have a house in New Orleans and you can get, we're doing this. So then you can figure out if you want to get an apartment in New York or LA. And it's also like for like a week that you have, I mean, what, what's going on? But I, I spirals. And then I told someone I did that. And sometimes just getting it out helps you have more of a view in it. So if you want to get something out, I loved getting the emails that I got because it can feel so good to read and then just also trying to suss up some emails. It can also probably feel good to send. I can't speak for the sender, but get it out. You know, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to judge you. What can I say to really, I mean, if you, if you're in this far, you know, I'm not going to judge you. We talked about me pooping in the pants. How about this for a not judgment? Craigslist dating. When I first conceived online dating, I went right to Craigslist because it was like, I just wanted to know that someone was down to fuck around in a way that was pretty dirty. So I said, yeah, okay, that could take months of conversation on okay, Cupid, or you just get right to Craigslist and you know they're going to do butt stuff. You, you're not going to meet someone on Craigslist. No, I don't do that. Yes, you do. I met you on Craigslist. Are they going to look anything like they say they do? No. Did I say I was a five foot, 10, 45 year old man with a giant dick? Yes. Is everybody full of surprises? Sure. But just so you know, I'm not going to judge you. I did that. You know? So write in. So this was some, an email I got that really spoke to me. And I will read it. Okay. Here it is. Hey. <clears throat> Imagine if that was it. I'm like, they're like, hey. All right. <laughs> so they said, title of the email, Instagram question about Trump. Hey, I recently met someone super cool and then realized they fucking love Trump. Like stick a thumb up your butt kind of love. Thoughts? So... I do have thoughts. I'm going to say what my initial thing is, what I feel like I should say. And if you, that's a very prominent thing right now where people are like, it's like feeling like you got to cover your bases. What I feel like I should say is, and this does feel true, but it's like, well, why does, what's the reasons? I don't know if it's he or she, I'm sorry. Why do they love Trump? What's their thought process around there? What's the influence of the family? What's the age range? How long have they 
had to think independently. I was listening to an interview with Jennifer Lawrence, love her, but she was talking about how she grew up and voted one way and then it switched. And, you know, it's thinking independently is really a process. So why are they for him? What are you willing to compromise? And is it a thought process you can, that you can actually respect? And what else is it indicative of? Are they just not that politically aware? Because, and I know, and now I feel like I need to say, I know what I to say is, okay, well, then that's a privilege we all can't afford to not be politically career. correct. Okay. But also, I've said it, I've regularly, I regularly confuse fracking and sharding. So this is what I know I should say, and I do think all of that's true, but on the real, real, for real, for real, for real, okay, if you were meeting my friend, if you were my friend, personal friend and our relationship was such that it was just like totally it's just us against the world and let's like say like say fucking space here you're like okay i met someone but they like trump i'd be like how hot are they are they like i still like trump hot what do you want from them you really like them, like it's fun, it's a distraction, it's something you can do during corona. I'm not saying to use someone, but I'm saying it sounds like it could be a good time. Also, I mean, look, I find Sarah Palin very attractive. Of any politician, I think she's, I mean, not that like that's like that high a bar. Um, I mean, that's like, I find a Skittle in a pile of shit. And I'm like, or I mean, I mean, I just can't even think of an analogy. But, uh, I don't know where I was going that. I find a Skittle and pile of shit and I want to eat the Skittle. That, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, I don't know what you're saying. I wish I was one of those comedians that was really good at analogies. I love it when I see comedians do that. But I didn't pay attention to school. I don't really know what an analogy is per se. I know it's like comparing a thing to another thing, but something, something. So I find Sarah Palin just, ooh, wait. She's she's hot to me. And I'm not just talking about how she looks. It's like, yeah, she's visually. No, I'm talking about her personality, too. She's a bitch. You know, that's the kind of thing where you want to express yourself from the heart where, you know, she's only attractive if she lets you push her around a little bit in the confines of the bedroom because she's just talking all that stupid shit all day, every day. And then you, you know, she just, there's something about her. So do you find this attractive in a, in a, a, is it like, think about it. Is it hot that they like the person? Or is it something where you're like, no, no, not hot. Like, yeah, I get the idea of something that's taboo, but this, this, what does that mean to you? And what does it mean to them? Is it just, is it just ignorant? Because what always is so interesting to me is, I really think at the heart of it, people do kind of want the same stuff. It's just so many convoluted ways of getting about it. But we're responsible for being aware of what those ways are and what actually helps us and helps people. And and then some people just don't give a fuck. But what I mean by people wanting the same things, they'll be like, okay, and it's all in the verbiage. The Republicans had that Republican contact with America. Newt Gingrich wrote it. I said that was brilliant because of the verbiage they phrasing. Do you care about your family? This is the act to protect your family. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, I want to protect my family. Well, to some people, that means guns out the ass. And then other people, that means no guns ever. Do you want to protect your body? For some people, that means eating cheese. For some people, that means no cheese. But once you get into the specifics, that's where things get real funky. And then it comes down to being paranoid. Oh, if you vote this way, those other people, they're tr- you need to vote this way because those other people are trying to get you. They're trying to take your money. So Republicans think, okay, the Democrats are trying to take, the, take away our money, take away our rights. Democrats think they're, someone's trying to take away my rights. They're not, they're not protecting people. People, no one wants their rights taken away. I'd say the vast majority of people, I'm not breaking any new ground on that. But then it gets convoluted of, okay, well, my rights are fine and your rights might not be fine under this, but I'm willing to make that compromise because I think that then it'll be, you know, you hear the buzzwords of someone's like, a, I mean, I, I, I'm, very, I'm in very close proximity to a Trump supporter too. And I got to say, they're a very nice person. It's confusing 
frustrating, confusing. And I really try not to be one to, I used to always be like, I'm not one to get into it. But then I remembered that this class I took, this anti-racist class, they said, well, that's the problem. You got the privilege of not getting into it. Right. And my mom's into it. I mean, my mom is so liberal. It's, it's, I'm going to say it, it's disturbing. Only in that what happens is, she back, I hate Republicans because they judge people. Well, aren't you judging Republicans then? Yeah, all of them. If you put it on a ballot, should Republicans be able to get married? I bet my mom would be like, nope, unnatural. Sick, not those people. They shouldn't be able to get married. They shouldn't be able to vote. Different water fountains. And because that's what happens when you start dehumanizing people in your head. And it's like, yeah, well, she's not really around Republicans. She goes to book club and she lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So they're all just not my mom, but they're all just like jerking off and high-fiving to NPR and like taking shots of hummus. So then they begin to de- you demonize what you don't know. I'm not bar- breaking any new ground with that. But to bring it back, and bring it, and I, I hope this isn't insensitive, and if you're boiling, like, well, you don't get it because you, you don't know about this policy about when we do this and they do that. You're right, and I'm sorry, and I'm open to learning. So let me know. Because I have been in such a bubble my whole life. I mean, I'm from rural Maine with two parents that are like are liberal. And then I went to an all-women's college in Boston. And ever since then, I've been in Boston, New York, L.A. So when I was spending that time in Louisiana, that was very eye-opening to me about what some of the dialogue was around, you know, why they maybe were more like, well, you know, I like Trump because... And this is something a lot of people say. They go, oh, he doesn't really have a problem with gay people or this or that. I'm not even going to begin to comment on that. But because, okay, who who knows what he personally feels, but the actions speak can speak louder than words there. But, you know, if someone is liking him because they're like, look, like they like this, like this. They're like, I work in the mines. You know, the goal where you get gold. I work in the gold mines and I wake up at 8 a.m. and go in there nine to seven. I don't know what the gold mine hours are, but I'm imagining they're not those, to be honest. Seems kind of like a nighttime thing. But I go into the mines and, and Trump has this policy that protects mine workers so the rocks don't fall on their fucking head. I'd be like, yeah, and that affects your life. I get it. So does this person like Trump for some obscure reason? And this could apply for Biden. You might be like, well, I fucking love Trump. I had a guy at my show once. I swear. He's up front. It was right after Trump got elected. He, yeah, I go on stage and he goes, Trump. And I'm, he's drunk. I'm like, yeah, buddy. Then as I go on, he's like, I like you and I like Trump. He said that. Fine. So after my set, I went, I hid in the bathroom like an adult because he ended up getting kicked out because he got in a fight with someone, the next comedian on stage. And while he's leaving, he's like, I like that little, el- that little, little lesbian. Where's that little lesbian at? I'm hiding. I'm not coming. Out. I'm not coming out to that call. That's not. Where's that little lesbian at? Yeah. Staying hitting. And if he had been like, I got tater tots, I would have been right out. So he missed the mark on that. But he goes, he's like, I liked her. I like her. I like Trump. Who? Fucking knows why. Who knows? Maybe, and maybe he was on bath salts. We don't know. But that's all to say. You might be listening, you might think, I love Trump and so that. So you could apply this to, you could apply this to if someone's like, I love Biden. And I, I poked around when I got this question. Why, what are the things that people get whipped up about with Biden and the thing? They're like, he's a pedophile. Pshh. Big word to be throwing around. That to me is very strange too because it's like, I mean, take take if you're a, a Republican or a Democrat out of it. I mean, that's a very time-consuming endeavor to be that, I would imagine. I would think you'd want to do something that was a little bit lower profile, but I'm, I really don't know. I've ne- I, to my knowledge, I don't know any, um, know any pedophiles, to my knowledge. Nope. Just I just ran through everybody. Imagine if I stopped and I was like, oh my God, Bubba. But... So I don't know any I don't know any of that, but that's like something that they like are hitting. Well, you like Biden, you support pedophiles. That the person that I know that uh, likes Trump, that was one of their talking points. I mean, yeah, that's one of their talking points. So see what kind of conversation you can have with the person about it. 
What do you want from them? Are you looking for a relationship? What are your deal breakers in it? Why are they doing it? You know, can and and say, you know, can this be someone that you can just go in their house and take all their snacks and get out? I don't know. But I don't know. I'd be very interested in what other people think. Can you be with someone where you have a fundamental difference like that? Tough one. Really, and the reason that's tough too is this is indicative of so many other things. That's where it can be really tough. It's indicative of a lot of other things. Like it's not, like my sister's a vegetarian and her husband eats almost exclusively meat, which as a side note, my mom and her brain, liberal brain, She's like, he eats all meat. Is he a Republican? I'm like, we eat shit tons of meat. She's like, yeah, but. Because she wanted to figure out if he was a Republican. Because she's got a problem with that. And I think probably her problem with that has then made me be so much more open-minded to that. Because I, I don't know. If I was born in someone else's situation, what would I be like? I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully the best version, version of them, but I don't know. So... My advice on it, and it's just going out without like knowing you or knowing anything other than that's not someone you're for and that is someone you're interested in does like them. First of all, I'll give a little bit of a prop for them even fucking admitting that right now, but I don't know where you live. Maybe you live in a place where like everybody's admitting that. I don't know. Where I am in LA, if someone admitted that, woo! My friend in New York confided in me that they were like Trump. It was a bigger production than anyone's ever, ever, I've ever seen. I'm concluding coming out of the closet as gay, trans, everything. I've never, I've had every people do that to me. Never seen something like this. She thought it was, she'd come out to me about it because she knew that I know someone that's for them, for Trump. And so she was like, I get why they are. And she was tiptoeing around. And I said, are you? And she was like, ah. and I was like, it's okay. You can, it's okay. Why? Just so, you know, we can talk about it. But even when I said why, I was like looking around. You know, felt very counter ban. And so the person told you that. I would wonder if they told you that like proudly. I'd maybe if they told you it proudly, I don't know. Try to fuck them in the butt. Try to dominate them. I'm, I'm saying I'm not saying this is from the good advice of my heart, but I'm saying but part of me wants to say you need to tr- own them. Own them. I don't know if you're into that. Don't push yourself to do it if you're not. But if you are into that even a little bit, get it to the point where they're very comfortable with you and then own them from the inside out and break them down. And not that anal sex does that, but that is a real ownership feeling. So I don't know if that's the type of advice you're looking for. And I really did think about it and I Google why do some people like this person, can you be in a relationship with people across party lines? And there's so much shit out there right now about this. It's crazy. Exo Jane, there was this author in there who had this whole thing about, um, this whole thing about, my phone's on airplane mode, but this whole thing, let's see, you know, it's affecting my marriage, it's ruining marriages, like we're all... We're hearing all about that. And from the advice that I was Googling, because I was hoping to have better advice than date him for a little bit, dominate them sexually, fuck them in the butt. Because that's just the advice that's really, really from my heart. But the advice where I was like trying to offer like advice that seemed more sound, things I found, and I like this. This is one. Practice living in complexity. Is They ask, pose the question, is there anyone you agree with 100% of the time? No! You don't even, I don't even agree with me 2% of the time. It's always a ping pong tournament with two people with no hands in my brain. And then they go on to say, how boring if you do, like living forever in a Facebook echo chamber of likes and thumbs up. Sounds fucking lovely. That, that was a bad example. If you spend enough time with anyone, you'll find things you disagree with. So that's true. Even those in your favorite political or religious or paleo diet team. Wow. A paleo diet team. Losers. Not paleo diet, but just being on a diet team. Even though, see, the ping pong thing. Even as I say that, it's like, yeah, but whatever helps support you to be healthy. Please, please do that. So living in complexity, I do think is important. Everything is so polarized right now. You know, that is a good point. You're not going to agree with everyone 100% of the time, but what's the deal breaker? Some of the best relationship advice I ever got. 
take this with a grain of salt because my longest relationship has been a year and a half or whatever one I'm in now. Okay, I was doing a show at a gay guy's resort in the Dominican Republic last week. No, I'm just kidding. I was doing a show at a gay guy's resort in the Dominican Republic two years ago. And I remember after the show, I was talking to this guy and we really hit it off. And he was telling me about his husband. He's like, my husband's asleep. And he goes, yeah, one of my deal breakers is not someone that likes to stay out with me. And he's like, and we've been married for 17 years. And how we've done that is, he's like, I made a list of things that I are my 100%, not negotiable, is that what he called it? He goes, my 100% not negotiable. He's like, would I like someone that likes to go out and do things at night? Yes, but is that a not negotiable? No. And then he said a couple of the not negotiables. I don't remember them because I have ADD and I definitely have drank a bunch since then. But you get the gist of it. So is your not negotiable someone who ideologically is not going to flow with you in that direction or maybe them challenging you in it will make you double down on how you feel. There's no way to know how much you really believe something until you 100% understand the counter arguments from all their angles, really and truly. And that's when you're really cooking, when you're like, not just going by the whim of whoever is presenting it best, but you're like, I see you, clever, I get it, and I still disagree. Boom. So that was some advice from people who are more mature than me just saying, fuck them in the butt. Now, this is another one of should you date, can you date someone with a totally different political view than you that I thought was very good? And I'm getting these from Psychology Today, just to give credit where credit is due. Listen more than you talk. That felt personal. You probably want to find out more about your partner's political views, so keep in mind two ears, one mouth principle as you practice truly listening. Resist the urge to lead with outrage and accusation. Ah, ain't that the truth in anything? Assume the person is as reasonable as you are as you ask them about their stance with genuine curiosity. Now, I know I'm not reasonable. Ish. So I wouldn't do that to someone else because then I'd be like, oh, you're a little, you're hot-headed. But assuming that people have the best intentions, I don't know if it's as tricky for everyone. I really do have a hard time with that, but we're all assume. I, I assume like the general public will have the best intentions, oddly enough. But then when it gets down to me, the closer and closer someone gets to me, the more paranoid I'll be like, oh, they're trying to trick me. And I don't know where that comes from. I really don't. I mean, I, it, I kind of have an idea, but that's what I'll think. So really, they're saying really listen i kind of hit on that okay honestly even though psychology today is like i'm gonna assume psychologist i still think to me my advice is the most fun get them real comfortable so they want it to get them addicted to you fucking them in the butt and every time you penetrate them you go who's your trump now or or who do you think would be the top or the bottom between Biden and Trump? Those two would never have sex. Actually, I think Biden would. I, I do. I do. I just have a feeling. Even though I do think that Trump, I just have a feeling. I think Trump, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I think Trump, if you're into that, is probably more fun to have sex with. Uh, but in terms of him being, yeah, more exploratory. I mean, he makes jokes about being sexually attracted to his daughter. Like this guy, he's, he'll go there. If you're into that, if you're into it, I bet he'll he'll play around, which I think is indicative of a fun, fun, fun sexual partner. This is the final advice from Psychology Today about going on a date with someone of a different political party than you. And also, it seems like now, like a political party is more than just a political party. It's it's us. I think also like it's like things are so chaotic and crazy and it's so natural to want to belong. And if you if you allow yourself to simplify things, which can be very empowering to do. About some things like me trying to get my steps in, just get the steps. in. Don't overthink it. Get out. Start walking. But We want to simplify things like this. It makes us feel like we belong. We've got a clear target. We're good. They're bad. That starts to get. Polarizing clearly. So they say about dating someone from across the political spectrum, remember to have fun. How interesting to be with someone who doesn't share all your beliefs. 
at least it won't be boring. And if you want to be with this person, take heart. If Kellyanne Conaway and George Conaway can make it work, maybe you can too. Eesh. I bet you this was written before they both quit their jobs. Although, I mean, oh yeah. Yep, it was. I mean, here's the thing. They're still married. They're st- And you know they're fucking each other in the butt. He's, he, she's the Trump supporter. I've seen pictures of them. I don't know if why I always uh, my brain goes to SM stuff. I don't know. I just have a feeling. If you watch that TV show Billions, the wife who is a psychiatrist, she always used to like tie her husband up. And I don't get the vibe that she's doing that to him in this case. They they are their sex must be uh, for them to stick through that. Phew. So everyone else's advice is is um, I don't think mine is like so far off from what other people are saying. The one I didn't read, but I'll mention now, is someone says, don't panic. Yeah, don't panic. Don't panic. It's like, what are they like about it, you know? How are people dealing with it? Are you in an inter-political marriage? You're voting one way, your partner's voting another, and what does that mean? It's probably more trickier when you first meet someone, too, because it's like you're like, it just can be indicative of so many other things, but then you don't know them. Ah, God, it's complicated. How did we even, how did we even get here? And it's so, someone said on stage the other night, they were like, they said, yeah, the election's 10 days away. And they said that yesterday. So that was nine, nine days now. I think that's how far away the election is. Uh, but when they said that, I was like, God, it's coming up so quick. I can't even... I can't even believe it. Someone also, I got a message about if I saw that ADD and ADHD are now the same thing. There's a joke I used to do back in the day about not knowing the difference between ADD and ADHD. They said, I'm paraphrasing, but it was like, Emma, have you seen the update on ADHD now being incorporated with ADD? I hadn't seen it. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Googled it. Which is a side note, I'm such a Googler. I Google before I ask someone else, unless it's my dad. Then I'll Google, hey, how do you do two plus two? What's the weather in Poughkeepsie? Whatever the fuck. Then I'll just ask my dad. But generally, I always try to Google before I ask because I can't stand it when someone asks me something they could so easily Google. So easily. Google it. I'm Googling it. You Google it. You Google, I Google, we meet in the middle. You Google, I Google, then we ask Jeeves. So... I did not know that about ADD, ADHD. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. I really was like, what? They sw- they combined it and they switched it up? Why are they doing that to ADD people? Of all the things to be switching around. My friend was like, yeah, it's like how they have dyslexia as a hard word to spell. Here's the problem with that, though. I Every word for me is hard to spell. I didn't really realize dyslexia was that hard to spell because everything like confounds me in terms of spelling. I knew dyslexia was tricky because every time I tried to spell it, it felt like a cruel joke because my... Autocorrect would be like, Bleh. but ADD, ADHD is incorporated. So I was Googling around about that and it is pretty interesting. So ADD was always considered a type of ADHD that doesn't involve constant movement and fidgeting, but it's a blurry distinction. The confusion dates back to 1994. That's when doctors decided all forms of attention deficit disorder would be called attention deficit hyperactive disorder. What? Why are you doing this to us in the ADD community? We don't know what you're talking about in the first place. We don't know what you're talking about in the second place. And now we got people not in the community being like, did you know? No, I didn't know. Inherent in me having the thing, I didn't know. That would be like, and I'm going to do an analogy. Remember, I'm not good at them. It'd be like someone who couldn't feel their body. Them being like, did you know one of those toes used to be cold? Now it's hot. Didn't know it. Can't feel my body. Didn't know they switched the ADD, ADHD around. Not paying attention. I'm 34. I didn't really Google what ADHD was, even though this is something that has profoundly affected my life. Profoundly. In terms of other people being like, well, you've got this. We're going to do testing for that. Go over here. Do this. Whatever the fuck. I didn't start Googling around and really trying to learn and understand it until the quarantine when I thought, hey, how does this affect how I am in relationships? How does my diet affect this? How is all of this affected? I wasn't really, really for real trying to learn about it. And I still had to have someone write in and say, did you know? 
I didn't know. Thank you for telling me. Why are they fucking, is it a cruel trick? If they switch it again, if they're just going to be like, psych, now it's called Biggie Bong, and uh, the definition has changed 500 times, yeah, that's not going to take. Oops. Oh, this is a timer. But thank you for telling me that. That's, it's interesting, and I will um, I'll look more into it. Next week, I've got a guest, Nikki Paris. He's a comedian. He's a comedian I know from New York City. I'll ask him about the Trump question, too. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, you know, and I know you're hearing that everywhere. I kind of tune out a little bit with stuff, especially because I have people in my life that are so, so, like, keeping me up on it, which I, I really do appreciate, I, you know. But it's, it's. In a hu- more human and a bigger, grander scale, it's more about just how you communicate with someone, which is what so many things come down to. And for me, I know the relationships where we couldn't get over something and we kept going back to the same argument, that's when things couldn't work out. Because it was less about the disagreement or whatever it was we were arguing about, but the fact that neither one of us could move from our stance on it and kept going back to the same issue so it inflamed other issues. And that this could be the type of thing that then taints everything else. Does that matter? And no matter what way you think about it, would there be harm if there's any iota of interest in your end to tying them up spread eagle and fucking them in the butt? Just to say you did it. I'm going to talk to my therapist about why that advice comes to mind. I don't know. Maybe I did my friend, uh, my buddy Zach Notaris has a podcast. It's about sex. We recorded it right before this. We were talking about sex. But I had that theory as my advice <sighs> before him and I recorded. So I cannot blame it on that. But Okay. You guys can email me, emmasbunker at gmail.com. And check this out. I wish I said this at the beginning. Duh. I got an email about shows I'm going to be at Zany's Comedy Club in Chicago, which is one of my favorite clubs. Oh, my God. And it's my favorite because they've been so nice to me. Zany's Comedy Club in Chicago and Rosemont. But I'm going to be at Zany's Comedy Club in Chicago. Buckle up. And let me tell you something. I'm going to get tested, rapid test. Okay? Be safe as a motherfucker. And these are going to be super socially distanced. November 6th, 7th, and 8th. Two shows November 6th, two shows November 7th, one show November 8th. I was at the Zanies Rosemont, if there's any chance that you were at that show, about a year ago. And then I was at Zanies Chicago about a couple months before that. So I got, a, I got some new material. I wish I had more. I got to crack the code. I'm just cranking it out. But I'm going to be, you got my, I'm going to be working on it. You know. And maybe my tooth will fall out. Hey, if the show's not going well, which don't worry about that, but maybe my tooth will fly out. At least we got that. At least it got, it's got a big laugh both times it's happened, so maybe that'll be my thing. Maybe, maybe, that'll, maybe next time America's Got Talent runs around, I'll just be the tooth person. I'm like, eh. Yeah, snack tooth. Okay. Emma's Bunker at gmail.com. Those are my show days. I'm going to be uh, so truly, truly, truly safe. Um, with all that and thank you so much I really I appreciate you and I hope that you are hanging in there and yeah thank you so much goodbye <laughs>